Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing to you, O God, our strength and our salvation. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So I've spent a lot of time this week thinking about demons. I wonder why. <laughs> but I, truly, even if this wasn't the passage appointed for today, that's what I would have been doing. Because what I was observing around me is the demons that I carry around, the demons that we all carry around, the demons that we create in ourselves, and the demons that others create and inflict upon us. Demons are everywhere. They're things that hold us and they bind us and they shackle us down. And what happens in so, for so many of us in life is as we battle these demons, as we f struggle with them, it chips away at us. It tears us down moment after moment until finally at some point in our lives, we come to a place where we have no hope. And that's what I see, and that's what, what I connected with um, in this passage today. The, the very first line this man possessed by demons says to Jesus, here Jesus comes and he cuts off the boat and he comes up and he says, hey, I have the power to get these demons off of you. And his response isn't, oh yeah, please do it. It's, what have you to do with me, Jesus? Do not torment me. That is a powerful, emotionally written statement. It's what I hear in that, that question, in that phrase, is someone who has given up. Someone who has been given promise after promise, hope after hope in the world, and has had those promises broken and not fulfilled, and has had that hope be less than what was hoped for. It was lacking. There's something in this man that is afraid to hope for some reason in this space. He just would rather live in the demons and the suffering that he knows rather than go through a hope and a loss of it again. And again, I think this just ties back into the demons that I have been observing and listening to in our world this week. And I think we all do this. We all, we all have these. So I invite you for this moment to think about where you are at in your own life or have been in your life. What are the demons that you carry around? What are the demons that keep you shackled down and hopeless? For me, I, I've heard so many stories of them this week. There was a gentleman that I met in a coffee shop on Friday and he shared with me the demon that he wrestles and is shackled down with is his heroin addiction. And it just makes me think, what are these other addictions that we are weighed down by? For some of us, it is the, the demon of addictions to drugs, to painkillers, food, alcohol, sex. For others of us, it is things that we actually enact out and bring into ourselves, this demon of seeking out power and greed. Um, that our self-worth is attached to that. For others of us, um, it's the demon that we create inside of our head that says, you are not worthy. You're not good enough. Who would love you? And then for others of us, there's the demons that we don't create. But others, as individuals and communities, create them and force them upon us. I see those demons um, just systemically all over our place. I think of my husband and his family and all my friends who are African-American in this country who suffer and struggle under the demon of the systemic racism that still exists in our country and the systemic injustice of how that tears a person down. And I think of the systemic injustice that I see going on right now with our Latinx sisters and brothers who, no matter where we fall on the end of that debate, I think we can all agree that it's not moral to separate children from their families, all because you're hoping for a better life. And I look at myself 
and I look at my own story and I think of the demon that I constantly battle in my life um, in learning how to forgive the man that I received HIV from eight years ago. All of us have a demon or multiple demons that we battle against. And like this man in the passage, don't we all come to a point where we say, do not torment me, God. I can't take one more lost hope. And the man possessed by these demons, he's not the only one that is experiencing this in this passage. You know, so we'll fast forward a little bit. We know he gets healed. We just heard it. But there's another group of people that are struggling with their own demons, and it's the crowds. It's the people that come from the city and the country around. You know, they are called forth by people who watch this healing occur, and they're like, hey, you gotta come see this, because that guy that was crazy and we had to shackle down, he's been healed. And so they run up, and they see this man in his right mind. He's whole, he has been healed. And what I would think we would all hope would be our response would be what? Celebration, joy, elation that someone has found healing, that life has been changed for them, but that's not their response. They are deeply afraid. And they push Jesus away. Just like that man, they have their own demons that they're wrestling with. And just like that man in his first statement, and just like us when we make statements like that man did, of why do you torment me? There is that great fear. Where does that come from? It comes from a space of having been hurt and broken so much in the world. We would just rather stick with the thing that we know because we know how to experience pain, we know how we've suffered through things, we, we know our demons, and often we choose to stay imprisoned by them out of the fear of what might come if we reach out and accept the new hope and the new life and the uncertainty of what that might look like. So we're all kind of in the same boat. We all have our demons, we're all struggling with them, but there's there's a poignant message that Jesus is reminding us of this morning. And it's that though at moments in our lives we are like the man in the story or we're like the crowds, Jesus is there. Jesus walks up to the man with the demon and says, I have power to free you from this. And that's the same offer that he offers to the crowds. And yet, though both are present in us, I think looking at them helps us see how there's two ways to respond here. For the crowds, they chose to walk away from that gift that was offered to them. They walked away from that hope. They were not ready to have hope again. They were not ready to do the things that they needed to do in their life to accept that gift. And so they turn it away and they keep their demons. But for those of us who are courageous enough to step out into that uncertainty, like the man with the demon, with the demons, there's an opportunity for hope in full life. Look at how this man responds. He starts out in this space of, I, I, don't torment me, I can't do it. But there's a dialogue that happened here that we are not privy to. But something shifts in this man from the beginning of the passage to the point where he turns to Jesus and says, I'm scared, but I'm gonna say yes to this one more time. Maybe this time this hope will be real. Maybe this time this new life will be a reality. And by stepping out in that faith, he, he does something that I think is important for us to acknowledge that Christ is here offering us this gift. It is always there but it's not going to mean anything unless we step out and accept it. There has to be a response. There has to be an action from us towards God in order for that grace, for that hope, for that new life to come about. And for that man, oh, in that hope, like he reached out and his whole life was changed. The shackles that were holding him bound into his demons were broken. 
He was made whole in body, mind, and spirit. And he's filled with elation and with joy. I think about this in relation to the demons that we thought and talked about earlier and what I perceived around the world this week. I think of that gentleman who sat down with me and said, my demon was the heroine. But here's the thing, to receive that hope, to live that new life, it's not a one-time event. It's a daily choice. It is an hourly choice. It's a minute-by-minute -minute decision to embrace the gift that is given to us. And so for him, he has new hope and new life. He is experiencing resurrection because each day he chooses to receive the gift God gives him. And I think about that with um, my husband and his family and all those who have experienced racism in our country and how it is a daily choice. It is a daily decision they make not to be held down and held captive by racism. But it's a daily act to step out and say, God has gifted me new life. And to be able to forgive and live a life that is whole and invite those who are not yet there into that healing themselves. And I think about it with um, the, the families that are separated from their children and how even in that space, they're finding places to find new life and loving and hoping for a new world for their family. And I think about it in my life and how that demon that is always back here trying to imprison me, but how it's a decision, it's a choice for me every single moment to actively forgive the one who has harmed me. So no matter where we are at on our journey right now, whether we are a member of the crowd or we are in that space to be courageous, the message here is the same. No matter where we are on our journey, Jesus is right there beside us offering around a hand and saying, I have the power to give you a new life. I have a power that can cast these demons aside. It's here if you're willing to take it. It's up to us on whether or not we're ready to say yes. If we're willing to be courageous enough to step out in faith and say, I'm ready for a new life that is whole and filled with love. What I wanna end on and just leave you with is wherever we are at, those demons, they seem so real and they are. But Jesus is so much realer. That hope is so much more realer and so much more powerful. That new life, that new life makes those demons like dust. We are offered a way to be released from the demons of the world, whether we've created them or not. It's a gift that's here, if we're ready to say yes. Amen.